It may be quite a while since you used the word ephod in daily conversation. Probably never. What does it mean? This is a hard question because it's simply a transliteration of the Hebrew word and is used only for this piece of clothing. Again, like the tabernacle, God begins with his focus point. The ephod was the high priest's outermost garment over, quote, the robe all of blue, Exodus 28, 31, which was in turn worn over the white linen robe and trousers. And again, like the tabernacle, both its beautiful coverings and its three entry points, the gate, the door, and the veil, the instruction was as follows, quote, they shall make the ephod of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and fine woven linen artistically worked. Verse 6. In portraying Christ in the Gospels, C.W. Slemming writes, quote, Matthew makes much of the purple as he portrays the royal king. Mark sees more of the scarlet and tells us of the suffering servant. Luke surely reveals the white linen of the perfect man, quote. John, of course, constantly points to the blue, emphasizing Christ is the heavenly man. In fact, God come in flesh. This garment is the equivalent of Jesus wearing his heart on his sleeve. It's all out in the open. Heaven must be awesome, since it's like our wonderful Savior. The ephod was like an apron, but hanging down at both the front and back. Its matching sash held it at the waist. The two straps over the shoulders each had an onyx stone fastened with a gold setting. Then gold chains were woven to secure these stones on the high priest's shoulders. Also, quote, you shall engrave the two stones with the names of the sons of Israel, Exodus 28, 11, with, quote, six of their names on one stone and six names on the other stone in order of their birth, verse 10. Thus, they all equally shared that elevated and safe place when, quote, Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord on his two shoulders as a memorial. Verse 12, what a picture of the secure relationship the believer has, born by the one who, according to Isaiah 9, 6, bears the government of the universe on just one shoulder. Although as shepherd, when he finds a wayward lamb, he, quote, lays it on his shoulders. Luke 15, 5. Can't we borrow the blessing given to Benjamin? The beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him, who shelters him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. Deuteronomy 33, 12. Speaking of his sheep, Jesus said, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. John 10, 28. The eternal life we are given strange as it may seem, really is eternal. And in the picture of how carefully the gems, representing God's people, were attached to the high priest, we see that security, listen, joined together, intricately woven, engraved, set them in settings, two braided chains of gold, fasten, bind, so that the breastplate does not come loose from the ephod, Exodus 28, verses 7 to 28. All different Hebrew words, many used multiple times, they portray how safe we are. It was not the stones, but the settings that made them secure. How safe? Quote, your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Colossians 3, 3 and 4. God doesn't put new life in our hands. 
If so, we might spoil it the way we did our old life. Instead, he gives us Christ. Quote, Christ is our life. The only way I could lose this life would be if God lost Christ. Preposterous. He, our great high priest, is the one who makes us sure, since he, our life, is already in heaven. <laughs> 